Hello, today I will walk you through a simple technical tutorial with Spark on Databricks. First, we will discuss some of the advantages of using Spark with Databricks together with Talent. Then, I will go through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a Databricks Spark cluster, how to run a Talent Spark job on that cluster, and how to read files from an Azure Data Lake storage and the Databricks file system. Finally, I will create a node pack using the same data on Databricks. So what are the key features with using Spark on Databricks? First of all, it's serverless, so you don't need to set up machines in advance. It's simple to set up, it takes literally minutes. Once the cluster is set up, you only pay for the time it's running, and you can simply terminate it and bring it back up. You can reconfigure the cluster, and the data is also persisted to the cloud storage by default, so you don't have to worry about terminating your cluster and losing your data. With auto-scaling, you don't have to know the number of executors you will need in advance. You can simply set the minimum number of machines and the maximum number of machines when you configure the cluster, and the cluster will auto-scale depending on the job you're running. The data engineer will create talent jobs, and the data scientist will create notepads, and both will be using the same infrastructure, the same resources, and the same data. The talent job will run on the Spark cluster, refine and prepare the data. The data scientist will create a notebook using the same configuration and the same cluster. For example, a talent job runs and create this flat movies crew member file onto the file system. The data scientist will directly have access to this file and to create a table with the same structure automatically and immediately you will have access to the same data with the same underlying Spark cluster and start to write queries. You can use Spark SQL, R, Python or Scala. Finally, when working with the notebook, the data scientist has easy access to machine learning and dashboard capabilities. In this example, I've created a query to see the split by language of the top 1000 movies of all time. However, in a table format, it's not the best way to visualize this, so I've selected a pie format. Now, let's go step by step through the configuration. First step, go to your Azure portal and create an Azure Databricks wor workspace and launch it. Now we will create the Spark cluster. Inside your Databricks workspace, click on clusters, click on create a new cluster, give your cluster a name. The version of Databricks that we support with Talent 7.1 is 3.5 with Scala 2.11. Choose Python version 2, driver type same as worker, worker type standard DS3 version 2. You can enable Databricks functionality for auto-scaling, which would mean that depending on your Spark job, Databricks will assign between minimum amount, number of workers to the maximum amount of workers. Remove the functionality for auto-termination. Before creating the cluster, we will associate our data lake storage or blob to the cluster. And this is a good point to mention that if you don't know how to set up your data lake storage, please check my other tutorial on how to create and configure your data lake storage. To associate your ADLS, enter the following properties and make sure you put here your right client ID credentials and refresh URL. And if you don't know how to get them, please check my other video on ADLS. Once you have uh, entered those properties, you can create your cluster. Next, we'll fetch our cluster ID and generate a token. Once your cluster is running, click on it. Click on Spark UI. Click on Environment. Here below, you can find your cluster ID. Copy the value. To generate your token, go to the user icon on the right side. Go to User Settings. Generate a new token. Give it a comment. And copy your token. Now we will configure a Talent Spark job to run on the cluster you just created. In Talent Studio version 7.1, I've created a big data batch job using Spark. Inside my run, 
Spark configuration, I'm choosing Databricks as the distribution with the current version. And then I'm configuring it according to the properties we have uh, collected so far. The endpoint, cluster ID, the token. Choose a folder name where Talon will place some jars inside the Databricks file system. And below, you can configure your Spark tuning properties. Another important thing to note is that you can use different types of storage in your job. Since we are running on Azure, you can either use an external storage, uh, Azure Data Lake storage or blob storage. In this case, we have configured ADLS or you can use the internal Databricks file system. In this scenario, we will use both. My job starts when I'm reading an input file from Azure Data Lake storage. I've configured my ADLS connection in the Azure FS configuration and I'm using it here in the CSV input uh, while pointing to Azure FS configuration. In my output, however, I have not defined the storage configuration and that means that my output file will be written on the Databricks file system. The Databricks file system is persisted by default into a cloud storage. While your job is running and afterwards, you can go to the Spark UI, you can see what their executors are doing and how many of them are running, and you can also see the driver logs. And since we wrote the output to the DBFS, you can also browse the DBFS and see your data. Here in this example, you can see one of the files I created. So in what cases do I use talent jobs and in what cases do I use a notebook? It makes a lot more sense to use a talent job when I have a process that I need to repeat several times. Things like aggregation or performing joins or performing transformations that I will have to do again and again. In such cases, a graphical interface makes a lot more sense. It will take a tiny fragment of the effort it will take to do the same thing with code. The talent job will prepare the data in a way that we will have good quality by the time it reaches the data scientist, so he does not have to deal with those things. However, when the data reaches a certain quality and requires visualization, it will be a lot easier to work with this data with the notepad. It provides the data scientists a way to experiment with the data and get quick feedback. It makes it easier for him to use machine learning and report on the data. Thank you for watching the video. Please make sure you check out other related topics in my channel.